Obviously you could always just use an RSS feed reader, but sometimes it might actually be useful to have a dedicated podcasting app. So that's where something like Castero comes in. Basically what this is, is a very minimal TUI interface for just listening to podcasts. Now it has a couple of problems, but I still think that it is a pretty useful tool. So if we go and actually have a look at this, it looks a little something like this. Now I've already got some podcasts in here, but how about we go and actually add something new? So right now I've got Tech of a Tea and the Meat Eater podcast. Let's go and add, for example, Sean Carroll's podcast. So if we just go and actually take the link to this and then go over here and press A. What that's gonna do is basically open up a little thing to add in a new URL. So if I go and paste this in and just press enter, give that a second to load. And as we're gonna see in just a moment, that should load the podcast in. Now, one thing to keep in mind is Castero can be a little slow when working with really big podcast feeds. Now, okay, there we go, cool. So this podcast feed has 100 episodes in it. So it might take a little bit of time to actually load stuff in, but it will load it in eventually. Now, let's say we didn't want, I don't know, the Meat Eater podcast anymore. Let's say we didn't really feel like listening to that one because, I don't know, let's just say we didn't want to have it anymore. So if I go and press D on that, what that's going to do is prompt us for a deletion. So just press Y on this, and there we go. Now it's actually been deleted. Now, by default, it won't actually confirm for a deletion. It will just go and delete the instant you press D. My recommendation would be to actually go and enable that feature just so you don't go and delete podcasts that you do want to keep listening to. So let's say we wanted to reload the podcast feed. So if I just press R, that's actually going to go and reload everything. So give it a second. And one thing to keep in mind is when you're reloading anything, don't try to add a podcast feed or delete a podcast feed because the application will crash. I don't know why it's set up like this. Wait until this message right here actually appears. So feeds successfully reloaded. If you try to do anything besides movement and listening to a podcast during that time, the application will crash. It probably should stop you from doing anything, but I did notice that it doesn't. And if you try to do that stuff, it's gonna crash every single time. So by default, it has Vim keys but it doesn't use the Vim keys properly. So it uses the Vim keys to actually, you know, go through the episode rather than to actually move around the interface. So by default to move around the interface, you would use arrow keys. I've switched it up to be Vim keys though, just because I like using Vim keys and it just makes it much easier to actually move around. So let's say that we've got our podcast in here now and we want to actually go and play something. So the way that we do that is we can go and press enter on something and that's going to start playing it. Now I should probably also mute the audio just so you don't have to deal with it, but let's say we wanted to play this episode right here. So if I just press enter on this, that will then go and start playing that. So give it a moment and as you can see it's worked out the time and now it's actually going and playing it. So just to prove that it's actually playing, I'll unmute it for just a moment. So there you go, that should be enough to show you that it's actually playing. And if we want to go and pause this, all we have to do is press P and play it, then we just press P again. Cool. So what if we didn't just want to listen to this podcast? Let's say after this one finishes, we wanted to go and listen to another podcast. Well, what we can do is we can actually go and find something else. Let's say after this, we wanted to go and listen to this episode right here. So if I just press space on this, that'll add it into our queue. Now, if you want to go to the next thing in the queue, you can press N. But how do we actually go and see this queue? Let's add something else into it, like this one right here and this one right here. So how do we actually go and see this queue now? Well, what we can do is go and press two. So one takes us back to the main interface, two takes us to this interface, three takes us to this one, four takes us to this one. So if we press two, takes us into the queue interface. So this basically shows every single podcast and what feed it actually came from in our queue. Now there's a couple of problems with the way the queue handling works. If you clear the queue, basically it's gonna delete everything from the queue, even the thing that you're currently listening to. So the way you clear the queue is by pressing C. That deletes everything from it, not just the things after what you're listening to, which is a bit annoying, but I guess it's, it's okay. Just don't clear your queue that often. So let's just play something and add something else into the queue. Go back to this interface. Now, Another thing is you can't actually go 
backwards in the queue. Once something is taken off of the queue, it is taken off of the queue. So if I go to the next thing, as you can see, the other thing is now actually deleted from the queue. So there's no way to go back to that. I would like to see it so you actually could go forwards or backwards in the queue, but sadly you can't actually do that. So if we move on to the next interface, basically what interface 3 is, is interface 1, but without the metadata. That's the only difference here. So if you didn't want to see all of this information over here, just go over to interface 3. Now, what about interface 4? That actually did show something a little bit different. So what interface 4 shows is all of the episodes that you've downloaded for offline consumption. So right now, all it's actually doing is just streaming the podcast. But let's say instead... We wanted to download a couple and then, I don't know, take our computer somewhere and go listen on the train or something like that. Well, what we can do is if we look at the help menu, which I think by default is bound to H, but H being one of the Vim movement keys, I've gone and changed it to the little tick. So basically the way that you can go and save an episode is by pressing S on it. So you save the episode for offline playback by pressing S. Cool, let's go back to the main screen. And let's say we wanted to listen to this podcast right here. So go and press S on this. It's going to start the download. And then basically it's going to go and try to download that. Now, I can't remember how big this podcast actually is. I probably should compress my episodes a little bit more because they are, you know, really big for podcast files. But that's something I'll deal with another time. So once this is actually downloaded, if I was to actually go and disable my internet connection and then try to listen to this, that would just keep working just fine. So as we can see, it's finished now. So you know what? I'm actually going to go and do that. If I go and just disable my internet connection and go on to interface four and just try to play this one. So we try to play that. And as we're going to see, so if I turn my audio back on, I had no internet connection, but the podcast is still playing just fine. Now let's go and mess with some other stuff. So if we go back to interface one, and let's say we want to actually search for a podcast in here. Now the way that filtering works is a little bit odd. So even though some of these are named with capitals, if you put a capital in here, it just won't work. So let's say we wanted to search for something by pressing slash, so the same way you'd search for something in Vim. Let's say we wanted to search for I don't know, every episode that contains uh, Super Cosman. So if we just start writing in Super Cosman, now because his name is capitalized, you would assume that, you know, you need to have it capitalized. Don't capitalize it though, because as you'll see, you won't actually find anything. What you have to do is instead do everything in lowercase. So Super Cosman, as you can see, he's been on four episodes so far. Now you can also search by number. So if you want to search for say, I don't know, number 21, for example. That will bring it up like that, or we can say search for number four. Obviously, the way that numbering is done really depends on the podcast naming. Basically, all that's doing is just doing a search for that part of the string. So if I go over to, say, Sean Carroll's podcast and give that a second to load up. Oh, actually, no, I need to get rid of the filter. Go back over to this. As you can see over here, he's done his numbering a little bit different. So if I wanted to search for, say, I don't know, 77, I'd have to search for that a little bit differently, but it will still work basically the same way. Let's say we didn't want to listen to a new podcast. Let's say we wanted to listen to something way earlier in the list. Let's say we wanted to go back and listen to episode one of Sean Carroll's podcast. Well, if I go and press I, what that's going to do is reverse the order of the list. So in this case, now the top of the list is the first episode of the podcast and the bottom of the list will be the newest episode. If I go over to my podcast and do the same thing, Actually, it keeps the same ordering. So when you change the ordering, it'll change it for every single podcast. So press I again, and now the top is the newest podcast. I again, now the top is the oldest podcast. So if we go and look at the help menu, there's a couple of extra bindings in here as well. So there's a binding to seek forward. By default, that'll be F or L. Now I've removed the L binding so I can use that to actually move around the interface and B or H to actually seek backwards. Once again, because I want to move around the interface with the Vim bindings, I've changed that up. And if you want to increase the playback speed, you can use right square bracket and you can decrease the playback speed with left square bracket. Now, one other thing I do want to mention is when you add in a really big podcast, sometimes it's going to really slow down the application. But for whatever reason, it's actually being, you know, lightning fast right now. So I did want to mention that 
it's not always this fast. Sometimes it will seriously slow down, especially when you do add in massive podcast feeds like Joe Rogan's podcast, but I guess it's not a problem right now. So I, I didn't update it or anything. It just started working better. So maybe it's cached it or something like that. I don't actually know what the deal is right here. Now, one thing you might want to do is deal with the color of the interface and just other sort of configuration with this application because by default, with a standard looking color scheme, the interface is going to be yellow. Why yellow? I don't know why yellow, but it's going to be yellow. So if we want to actually go and configure that, what we do is go into our configuration directory and what we're going to do is go into a folder called Castero and in there, there's going to be a file called castero.com. And this is going to be installed alongside the actual application. So this is a massive config file that basically explains what every single thing you might want to configure actually does. So I don't even really need to explain most of this. Most of it's really, really well commented. But let's say you wanted to change the color of the interface. Well, the way that this is done is pretty straightforward. So let's say you want to change the foreground color. Well, you can set this to either black blue, cyan, green, magenta, red, white, yellow, or if you have a 256 color terminal, which you probably have at least a 256 color terminal, you can use from negative one to 255 as well. So I've got mine set to cyan, but let's go and set it to something like red. And if we go back into Castero now, as you're gonna see, now all of the foreground colors are red. I'm not a big fan of this color scheming. I personally prefer it to be cyan, but feel free to set the colors, you know, however you want them to be set. As for the rest of the configuration, it's all really straightforward because everything is so well explained. I don't really think I need to go over that much in here. Basically with any of the coloring, just mess with the coloring and see what it changes. With the key bindings, all of these are really well explained as well. And it tells you what the defaults are and what they actually do. So it should be pretty easy to set this up the way that you actually want it to be set up. Now I have actually hit on most of the problems I did want to bring up in this video, but there is one that is kind of a big deal. So when you run Castero, it doesn't actually save the location you were listening at. So for example, it knows which podcast we were last listening to, but if we you know, try to unpause that, it doesn't remember where we're actually at. So it's going to start again at the start of the episode. So as you can see, let's just pause it at 10 seconds in and let's quit this and then restart it. Now it remembers the episode we're on, but it doesn't remember the fact that we were 10 seconds in. So that I think is kind of a big deal. I definitely would like to see it remembering exactly where we were up to. So besides that problem with not saving where we were up to, it's actually been fairly well behaved while I've been recording. Usually there's a few more bugs here and there, but for whatever reason, as soon as OBS came on, it seems to work actually really, really well. So I don't know what's happening there. I guess I'm just unlucky most of the time. So if you actually want to go and test out Castero for yourself, it is available on the AUR. So you can go download it with something like Yay, or you can go and manually install it with pip because it is a Python application. So pip install Castero. Then when you want to upgrade it, pip install Castero dash dash upgrade. As for the dependencies, it requires Python because obviously it's a Python application. SQLite 3 because it uses a SQLite database to actually store, okay, this is the feeds we've downloaded. This is where the podcasts are located, things like that. And it also requires some sort of media player like VLC, MPV or LibMPV, whatever you feel like actually using. If you'd like to import or export your subscriptions from another client or to this client, what you can do is use an OPML file. And the way that you get access to this is just from the command lines. So if you just run castero dash dash help or dash H, it's gonna show you, okay, if you want to import an OPML file, just use this option right here. Or if you wanna export the OPML file for castero, you can use this option right here. Now I've never actually done this, so I don't know how well it actually works because when I go to a new feed reader, basically I just manually put in the new feeds. So I've never tried that out. Maybe it works really well and I'm missing out on something, but I don't change my feed reader that often for it to be that big of a deal. So if you wanna try this out for yourself, try it out, let me know if it works. 
but I haven't tested it for myself. Now, I don't actually use Castero on my system that much because most of the time when I'm listening to podcasts, I'm usually out walking somewhere. I don't really like listening to podcasts when I'm at home. Most of the time when I'm at home, I typically prefer to listen to music. Normally my podcasting is saved for when I'm, you know, out somewhere and I know I'm going to be going there for a really long time. That's usually when I listen to podcasts, so I don't have that much of a use for a podcast listener on my actual computer, but maybe you're not like me. Maybe you actually do listen to podcasts when you're at home and something like this actually will be useful for you. If it is, maybe Castero is something you want to try out. I know there's a lot of like GUI clients for podcasts as well, but I don't really see, besides obviously saving where you're up to, what a GUI client could actually add in. And obviously Castero, there's no reason why it couldn't actually save your location. If it just saved your location, I can't actually see a reason to use any other podcast client unless obviously, you know, you'd just like to use a regular RSS feed reader and then use something else to listen to your podcast. If that's what you want to do, that's cool. But besides that, I don't really see any reason to use any other podcast client. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Craig, Nathan Arjun, Monsar, Corbinian, P.E. Road, Tony Donald, John Spagin, Thais, and Zilva. If you want to go support the channel, there'll be some links down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gearies in this channel or anything else you want and not a small kickback for. Or else we can go check out my podcast. That is Tech of a T available on Library, YouTube, and a bunch of other platforms as well. And the audio version is available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, remember to go check out this channel if you're listening on YouTube, on Library, BitTube, BitChute, and a bunch of other platforms as well. And remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. And also, if you like the Rambly videos, go check out my blog on Mines and also read .cash. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.